So we're going to start in um, Shavasana, uh, but we're going to make it a little bit more supportive. So we're just going to put a pillow just behind our knees. So we have like a slight bend in our knees. We're going to keep our feet hip width or further um, apart and just make sure you have like your strap and your block just um, handy. And then just coming to lie down, if you need to adjust so that it's still behind your knees, you can. Just let your feet flop out. And just like if you were coming to Shavasana at the end of the class, we're going to do it at the start of class instead. So spinning your palms up towards the ceiling, rolling your shoulder blades down your back. Taking a couple of just big sighs. Maybe as you take those sighs, you feel your fingers starting to curl into your palm. You feel your hips start to melt down to the earth. Feel your ankles just relax a little bit. Maybe your breath starts to get a little bit longer. Instead of closing your eyes down fully, just softening your gaze a little bit. And if there's a point in which you can focus on, try and just gaze at that point. Don't attach anything to it. And as you gaze at that point, maybe your mind starts to daydream a little bit. Maybe your peripheral vision gets a little bit blurry. Allowing any noise in our mind to just drift away. Just allowing our body to just have this moment of rest before we start to move. Reminding ourselves that in a yin practice, we take things a little bit slower, but we still want there to be light intensity within the body. So pushing ourselves to find that edge of our pose, committing to holding it and finding that stillness. Not letting our ego take over, so we're pushing ourselves beyond that edge. Softly moving between the poses so that we allow our mind to tell us when it's reached it. Just letting that internal chatter in your head with every exhale releasing it out the crown of your head. Not attaching anything to it. Knowing that if any of this chatter comes into your mind during class, just trying to let it go. Nothing should be distracting you from just what you're feeling in your body. Just taking one more inhale here and I want you to breathe in. Feel your lungs expand, your belly expand, collarbones start to lift away. And then hold your breath at the top and then exhale out a sigh. And then just bending your legs slightly, just so you can remove that pillow from behind your knees and just setting it just within reaching distance, then re-straightening on our legs. 
And we're gonna walk our heels just slightly over to the left hand side so your ankles might come off the mat. And then we're gonna reach our hands overhead and then start to walk our hands over to the left hand side, keeping that right hip and that right shoulder still glued down to the earth. And then as you start to feel that stretch along your right hand side, if you wish, you can cross your right ankle over your left toe, still keeping that hip down, and you can grab your right wrist with your left um, hand. And on an inhale, we're just going to reach to find length all along that right hand side, take any little movements you need, and then on an exhale, you're just going to sigh to settle in to this pose. Feeling that line of energy up and down your right hand side as you breathe in. Feeling it running from your baby toe all the way up to your pinky finger. And exhaling, sending it down your body. And committing to holding this pose. you're breathing, feeling that right lung expand out into your rib cage. Feeling all of those little tissues expand with every inhale. But maybe with each inhale, the space becomes even bigger. One more breath here. And exhale, just uncrossing your ankle and gripping your wrist, just lying down and center just for a moment, just feeling that brief dis the difference, sorry, between your right and your left side. And then walking your ankles over to the right, hands and wrists over to the right, keeping the hips and the shoulders down. And then if you wish, just crossing that left ankle over your right and then grabbing your right, sorry, your left wrist with your right hand. Taking an inhale here to reach the toes and the fingers away from one another and then exhale to settle down, remembering to go to the edge, finding that stretch. And then exhale to breathe yourself down into the mat. Adding a visualization to your breath if you wish. As you feel it running up and down your left hand side. And starting to feel your shoulder softly opening adding a bit more mobility into your hip that breath just find that expansion creating the space that your body's craving just taking a couple more breaths here so really utilizing that breath Allowing your lungs to stretch into your torso. And then yearn 
chest, exhale, just slowly unwinding your hands and your legs, spinning your palms back up to the ceiling, bringing them alongside. And just maybe feeling that length that you've created. Imagine if you were to stand up right now, you might be a couple of centimeters just taller. And then just placing our feet onto the mat. They don't need to be at any certain distance. And then if you do have a belt or a strap, just grabbing it, it's not essential. And then grinding our right, actually the left leg into the earth. We're gonna reach our right leg up to the sky, flexing our toes. You can have a nice bend in your right leg here. And then we're gonna come into a reclined split. So if you don't have a strap, just interlacing your fingers, placing them behind your thigh, and just letting the weight of your hand by your arms, just bring that knee ever so slightly closer to your chest. Or if you do have a strap and wish to use it, just putting it over the um, sole of your foot, grabbing each side of the strap with each hand. And then just letting the weight of your arm, just let that foot drift down. Keeping your hips nice and square on the earth, so feeling the small of your back press into the earth. Shoulders are nice and heavy here. I'm not lock, locking out the knee. We want to keep a little bit of a bend in the knee. We'll still get that nice release in our hamstring. And just treating your whole leg as if it's really, really heavy. That weight is coming down into your hip socket. And as you breathe in, you're feeling that breath working from your sit bones the back of your quads, the back of your knees, running along your calf to your heel. And then as you exhale, just running back down the back of your leg, all the way to your hip. Knowing that if there is any intensity, that's coming up for you in this that isn't painful. It's your body speaking to you, it's telling you that this is what it is. Staying here for another couple of breaths. So if you've maybe lost your edge, you need to come back to it. You've got another couple of breaths to find it. And your next exhale, really slowly, if you have a strap, just releasing it, re-bending your knee and bringing your foot back down to the earth. Feeling your hips settle into the earth and then on the inhale, reach that left leg up towards the sky. And again, grabbing behind the quads, if you want to place a strap over your foot, you can. Slight bend in the knees, so we're getting a nice stretch in our hamstrings. If you have a locked out knee, it'll be more of a nervous stretch and we don't really, we don't really want that. But again, making that leg really heavy, so you're really sinking into that hip, plugging that, um, your femur bone back and then just slowly tipping your leg down towards you. And if you're holding onto your strap and your elbows are off, just making sure you've got a good grip on that strap so your arms can also relax, your hip, your shoulders can melt into the mat. And taking that visualization of your breath running up and down the back of your legs again if you wish. So 
any um, weight of your arms and your legs. Allow your body to stretch out. Allow your hamstrings to lengthen slightly. another couple of rounds of breath so maybe ease out of your edge just coming back to it or if your hamstrings have opened maybe just bringing that leg even a millimeter closer to your body but keeping it really heavy in its socket your next exhale just really slowly bringing that foot back down to the earth you can just set your strap off to the side if you used it we won't be needing it again this time bringing both feet up to the ceiling this time flexing your toes and then bending your knees bringing your knees in towards your armpits we're just going to start off by grabbing behind our knees we're just coming into an easy variation of happy baby here just sussing out seeing how it's feeling and then if you can take it deeper and you know you can hold it through your um, yin practice, just grabbing the outside or inside edges of your feet, whichever is comfortable. Taking whatever little movement you need to make to settle there. And then once you get into the posture, making sure your knees are going away from one another and your tailbone is going down towards the earth. So as if your knees and your tailbone are three points of a triangle and they all want to move away from one another. So finding that and then holding it. Making sure our shoulders are nice and relaxed here. So even though they're helping us to grip onto our feet, where can you release your shoulders a little bit scanning through our face and our mouth and our jaw just making sure there's no tension there and exhaling out a sigh is a really good way to make sure that we're washing away any of that tension that's building up Thinking about the three points of that triangle trying to move away from one another. If anything's starting to come up for you, if your hips are starting to cause some internal chit chat in your mind, I need to exhale it away. Allowing your body this time to really open up. Just staying for another couple of rounds of breath, just doing a quick check in. Maybe going a little bit deeper just for a couple of breaths. But if going deeper means that your breath then gets shortened or increased, back out of it.
taking one more breath here. Before we come out of this fully, you're just going to bring your hands then behind your knees and then bring your knees into centre and then hug your knees into your chest before placing your legs onto the mat. We're just going to windshield wiper our knees, just dropping them out to the right, bring them into centre and then dropping them out to the left. And then bringing them to centre and then we're going to come to a seat, we're going to come up slowly, we don't want to rush it, it's just coming onto your side, using your hands to support you and then just bringing yourself up through the centre and then just sitting here for a moment closing our eyes. So when we have been lying down for a while, if we rush to get up it can be a little bit funny, just giving yourself a little moment just to let everything settle. And then we're going to come into a nice comfortable seated position. So you might want to just come to sit on your pillow um, just so that your hips are just slightly higher than your knees. If you have a blanket also and you want to fold that up and place that underneath, you can. And then just come into a nice comfortable cross-legged position or if you want to even stack so that your um, heels and your ankles are kind of one on top of the front of the other, you can. We're just going to come into some nice neck stretches, but before we do that, we're going to do some rolls. So we're just going to drop our head over to the left hand side and then let our neck roll all across the front and then up to the right and then back across the front. So it doesn't feel good in my body for me to do a full 360, so for me to go round the back but if it feels nice in your body for you to rock from left to right and then tip your head back you can so just really slowly rolling the neck out if you find a nice sweet spot that you want to go back and forth a couple of times you can just feeling everything there just stretch out and then just taking it one more time each direction Maybe you start to feel it in between your shoulder blades and all across your collarbone. And then bringing your head through to neutral and just making sure you've got a nice proud um, seated, seated position here. We're gonna draw our ear over to our right hand side. Bring your left hand just to set on your knee just for now. Sending that left shoulder down your back. So we've got loads of space on our left hand side here. You can stay here if this is enough, or you can place your right hand, literally placing your palm on top of your right ear. And not pulling anything, just literally letting the weight of your hand on your head start to stretch in the left hand side of your neck. There's kind of three levels in this. You can bring your right ear down to your right shoulder. And then you can place your palm on your head. And then if you want to ramp it up even more, and I listen to what your body's telling you, you can lift your left hand and just set your left hand down to the earth or even hover it. And just imagine something really heavy on that left shoulder as it starts to melt down to the earth. We want to keep our chest nice and proud here so try not to collapse in on yourself. I'm going to take another couple of breaths here. We don't want to spend too long in poses like this when there's only tiny little muscles and layers of tissue working. one more inhale and then staying exactly as you are if you've brought your left hand out just placing it onto your um, thigh if you put your right hand on your head just bringing that just the other side of your cheek and then everyone placing their hand on their cheek and then just supporting your head bringing it through to center and then just taking another couple of neck rolls so dropping over to the left hand side or rolling it around to the right just feeling that difference on each side 
and then bringing your head back through the neutral. And then this time dropping our left ear over to our left hand side. So this is stage one. And if you want to ramp it up, just placing the palm of your left hand just on top of your right ear. Again, no pulling here, just the weight of our body. And then reaching our right hand out. And if you do go to a stage that feels too deep for you, remember you can always take it back. Feeling your length, your sorry, your neck start to lengthen out. We spend so much time looking forward and down at devices and screens, so our neck can become very tight. And as our neck becomes tight, our shoulders become tight, our upper back becomes tight. It's all connected, so even good to just do this stretch just during the daytime just to ease things off. Just taking one more breath here. And then just staying as you are, if you lifted your right hand, just placing that back on your thigh. Then everyone's going to bring their left hand to their left um, side of their head and then using that just to prop their head back through to center and then just taking your shoulders bringing your shoulders up to your ears then rolling them down your back and then we're going to do that two more times that direction just taking this nice and slowly really feeling it out let your shoulder blades melt down and then bring it the opposite way so bring our shoulders up to our ears and then bring them forward so bring yourself into a slight cat cow with your upper back when you're doing this up to your ears and forward and then just rolling over your ankles if you are sitting on anything just placing it off to the side but keeping it within them um, within reach we're going to bring our knees so that they're stacked on top of our hips if you have any knee issues and you want to pad them up you can. Then we're just going to pull our hands forward. Now keeping our hips up really nice and high, feeling those sit bones start to move away from each other as we come into a melting heart pose. So reaching our hands away from us. Your hands can be angled slightly at 10 too. And then just as the pose name suggests, letting our heart melt down to the earth. And feeling that opening from our elbows all the way up to our armpits all across the front, the, the top of our back. Letting our sternum just melt down to the earth. And just imagining that you've got someone there with you that's just slowly pawing their hands from your hips, just slowly down your back. Sadly, this global pandemic means that we can't get massages, but at least we can imagine it. Someone just pawing their hands down your back. Everything becomes heavy and melts down. And this pose can be a little bit restricting on our breath. So just letting your breath move how it wants to in this pose. So not forcing yourself into anything too deep, but trying to keep a bit of length with your breath here. So 
just taking another couple of breaths. And if you want to increase this at all, maybe lift your gaze and place your chin on the mat. And your next exhale, just really slowly bringing those hands back so they're coming underneath your shoulder blades, just coming into your tabletop position. Honoring that feeling through your body as you're coming in between poses can be just as beneficial as being in the pose. So just doing a quick cat card, so pushing the ground away to round your spine up. And then dropping the belly down. Pushing the spine away, rounding your tailbone under. And then dropping our belly button down. And then coming into our neutral spine. And then just dropping our feet back to our hips and then just curtsying our feet over to the side. And just like when we started in Shavasana, we're gonna bring a pillow just behind our knees and our legs are going to be out in front and if you're if you sit naturally and your feet turn out to the side that's absolutely fine if you sit naturally and your feet go point and um, straight ahead that's fine so just allowing your legs to just fall whichever way they want to everybody's body's different it's just how your bone basically sits in your hip joint and um, some people sit naturally and their feet fall in I, I don't know how they, I don't know how they do that um, so if your feet fall out, that's absolutely fine. Just let your feet basically go wherever they want to go. We're gonna sit up nice and tall on our sit bones here. So just making sure that you're moving any nice booty out the way so you can sit up nice and tall. As if someone's lifting a piece of string with your chest and then on exhale, keeping that nice length, just treating your um, hips as if they were a hinge, starting to hinge over those legs, keeping your chest nice and open here. So you can drop the head if you want, but if dropping your head means you're going to round your shoulders and close in, keep your head open. So imagining someone's kind of got their hands on your shoulders, they're melting them back. The focus here is not how deep we go, but keeping that length in our spine. As we start to stretch from our glutes all the way up our back. And then you might be feeling it a little bit in your hamstrings, but we've added that pillow there, so it kind of takes a little bit of that away. Just having a quick check-in with the areas of tension in your body. You can probably see your toes in this pose, so See where you can release in your foot. Even down to your baby toe. Just quite releasing that. Keep sending that tailbone down to the earth. Your hips are really heavy. Your upper body's really light. every inhale think of your breath coming out of your collarbones with every exhale sending it down to your sit bones keeping that lightness through your collarbones and that heaviness through your sit bones Checking in if you can maybe make any tiny, tiny adjustments or subtle movements. You're still getting the full benefit from this posture. Still getting those tiny, tiny little bits of fascia in our body, all those lovely layers of muscle and tissue. Getting it nice and activated. our 
our body to naturally produce the hyaluronic acid so it can keep itself nice and supple. Just taking another couple of breaths here, just remembering inhaling to keep your collarbones nice and open and exhaling to keep those hips really heavy. Exhale, using your hands as support, pushing yourself back up to your shoulders, you're going over your hips, just sliding that pillow out from behind your legs, maybe just set it maybe to the top of your mat, maybe if you want to put your head on top of it in your shavasana. Then just placing your hands on the mat, and again, we're just going to windshield wiper our legs from side to side, so we can just ease off in the hips a little bit. And then just sitting up really nice and tall, neutralizing the spine, and then just hugging yourself in. And really slowly hug yourself in as we're moving our spine between extension and flexion. And then while you're nice and hugged in, just make yourself into a tiny, tiny ball, tipping your weight backwards, and then just coming to roll onto your back, using your core a little bit just to stabilize you. And then you're going to straighten your right leg and you're going to place your left foot to the outside edge of your right leg. So you've probably done this position but when we've been sat upright. We're going to come into a supine twist from here but you might want to have like your pillow or your block handy as you drop yourself over to the right hand side and that um, left knee might not quite make it to the ground so you might just need a pillow or a block just to set on it, just don't worry if you need to shimmy about a wee bit to get yourself there. So just a variation on our supine twist. If you want to come into a more traditional one, you can. And then just bringing our arms out either side. Really letting go of any tension in our belly here. Making sure our right glute isn't squeezing on. Just taking these twists just to ease off our low back at the end of practice. Letting your next inhale slowly bringing yourself through the center, center. You might need to shimmy your hips back into the middle of the mat and then just change up the crossing. So the left leg's gonna be nice and straight, making sure your left foot's in line with your hip here. So you wanna get yourself aligned first. Placing your right foot just to the outside edge of your right ankle, having your blocker pillow handy if you want to rest your knee on it. Shimming your hips slightly over to the right and then dropping over to the left hand side. I say this a lot, you don't have to come into every pose immediately. You don't always land in every single pose. So taking any movements, I'd rather you take movements to get yourself into the right position and feel you need to drop into it perfectly every time. You want to make sure the pose is completely benefiting you. ringing out our body at the end of class. This twisting action, applying a little bit of pressure to what's happening inside, just starting to detox the body a little bit. Inhale, 
allowed to come through to center and then just making sure your hips are nice and neutral so they're kind of in line with your shoulders and bringing your feet down to the mat and then just preparing yourself for shavasana so you can take a number of options here so if you want to put the pillow underneath your knees like we did at the start of class you can or if you want to bring your feet planted on the earth and let your knees knock in you can or you can put the pillow under your head or just take whatever restful posture your body wants right now just breathing out any last minute thoughts or anything that's come up for you just releasing before you find a couple of moments of peace and quiet again you can close your eyes here or if you'd rather have that soft gaze you can have that maybe bringing your awareness back to a focus point to let all that's going on around you just start to blur away 